In this video, we'll take a look at database design in more detail, and we're going to share some best practices for you. So in the quick start, we used a predefined schema with all the configurations and settings already in place. So I want to take a look at these in more detail, looking at the most important settings to consider. So the first thing is the table level settings. So starting with table type, and this has two options available for you, partitioned and splayed. Partition tables are used for large time series data sets and will be the most common type and the best for large volume, high frequency data. And we do need to have at least one of these in our schema. We also have a second option called splayed, and this is slightly less common, but should be used for medium sized tables that are not growing that much. So this might be something like reference data or non time series data that is relatively static and unchanging. So when you're determining which one to choose, think about the size of your data and how fast it's going to be growing. So when we create a new schema, you already have one partition table already. You can see here. And then when partitioned is selected, you can also see that we need to set a column to partition on, which must be of a type timestamp. Again, by default, this will be populated for you. And if you do have multiple columns with the timestamp data type, you'll see more than one listed here. Therefore, you're going to need to consider how you will be querying your data as it's important to partition the primary time column. And that's typically going to be the one you'll be using most for filtering queries. And for example, in a lot of cases, this could be the event time that the data occurred or was captured. So for more detail on these table types and the reasoning behind them, it's covered in depth in our advanced course on the Academy. So I'm going to link that below. Now on the left hand side, we see we've got column 11 settings. And I'm going to focus on the most important one to be aware of for newcomers, which are attributes. Now, attributes are a really important feature of KDB technology, and they allow you to describe your data in order to get the best performance out of it. And you can think of them like shortcuts for querying your data. And they really are a must have if you want to unlock the full speed and power of KDB. And you can see where we're setting these is under ODB, IDB and HDB. So first of all, I'll just explain what they are. So these are simply the data tiers used for accessing data with different levels of compute, depending on the age of the data. So the ODB or real time tier is for most recent data and it has the fastest access option and that data is stored in memory. Next, we have the interval or intraday tier and it's still recent data, slightly older than what you have in the ODB and it will be on disk. Then finally, we have the HDB, which is historical data. Typically, it's used for data older than today and it's gonna use the least amount of resources to store. So when it comes to attributes, they're really critical for the IDB and the HDB mainly, as they're the ones that are on disk. And we can have attributes on the ODB too, but it's less important as that data is only a relatively small amount and it's kept in memory. Now you can have different attributes set on the different tiers of your database, and they can be tuned to optimize performance at each here. So you do need to think about your own use case and the user query patterns and how performant you want your data to be. So how do I know which column to set these attributes on? Now, very commonly with large time series data sets, you're going to have a key identifier column. And this could be like a symbol in finance. This could be a stock symbol denoting which security the values are for. Or in manufacturing, you could have an ID column that has the sensor no name or number, and that would denote which device the readings have come from. So if you have an ID column like this in your data set, choose this to be the column that you're gonna apply a parted attribute to in the HDB and the IDB, and this is gonna significantly enhance the performance. So I mentioned parted attributes there, so I do just wanna stop and take a look at the four types of attributes for a moment. First of all, we have sorted, which is basically sorting the column in ascending order. And this is really good when you have values that are not going to repeat, like think of your timestamp column, for example. The next one is parted, and this is like the next level up from sorted. So it does a further step after sorting to then also group all of the repeating values together. And each unique value there is given an index, which can be used for lookup. And it's really ideal when we have that kind of identifier or ID column. Now, applying the parted attribute does require more memory than sorting alone because you are doing that extra step. And it's important to note that this act 
of applying the attribute does take up memory. So that's okay for the end of day behavior or the interval behavior because it's happening only once every day or once every few hours with the IDB and the HDB when you're applying it. But with the RDB, this would happen every time you got a new record. So the performance benefit of having your data sorted or parted on the RDB are much less than for large historical data sets. So generally, it's not recommended to have these attributes on your RDB. Then we have the grouped attribute, which behaves in a similar way to the parted attribute. But the difference being the column does not need to be sorted first. And that's why we recommend using it for real time data in the RDB when you have that identifier column, because you don't need to resort your data every time you get a new record coming in. And of course, if you don't have that ID column, then it wouldn't really make sense to do this. Then finally, we have unique, which is probably the least common attribute used. And it's for when you have no repeating values. And it's most commonly used for primary keys to improve the performance there. Now, for further information on each attribute, we have a module on the Academy dedicated to this with a lot of examples for you to try and more information there. So I'll link that below. So going back to this sample database, we're going to choose what I recommend, and that's grouped for ODB and parted for IDB and HDB when you have that identifier column. Now you'll notice a warning pop up letting us know when using parted, we must have our data sorted. So let's use the sort settings down here on the right hand side to sort our symbol column. Now you might notice that in the quick start example, we didn't have an ID or a symbol column. So in that case, the best option is to apply sorted to the timestamp column. And that's just going to be in your IDB and HDB. Because remember, sorted requires sorting. So we don't want to do that on our RDB and we don't have any repeating values in there because it's a timestamp column. So group doesn't make sense for that use case. So hopefully that gives you some insight into the reasons why you might choose some settings. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you feel more confident knowing which settings to choose for your data set to obtain the best performance. And do refer to the docs in addition to get more detail on all of these settings. So try the end of module quiz to test your knowledge.